I'm Lisa Young. I'm a lecturer in anthropology, um, and I'm also an archaeologist. So I've worked in northeastern Arizona, uh, having engaged learning opportunities with students out there to do archaeology, and I wanted to try to do that again. An archaeological project is very expensive and very time consuming, so I wanted to think of other opportunities to be able to, to um, engage students. And so last semester I taught a class called Museum Anthropology. And in this class what we did was we uh, used a museum collection as a way for students to learn about uh, Native American culture, where this collection uh, had originally been collected from. And uh, then I was able to get uh, one of the global video conferencing grants, um, which are wonderful because then you get all sorts of support, not only on technical things, but pedagogical things also. And I also got an LSNA faculty grant, faculty projects grant to help me with the digitization of, of things. So um, let me first introduce you to the collection. I uh, always, when I teach this class, I want to give students hands-on experience, and the collection I picked was agricultural seeds, in part because it's a wonderful collection, but in part because you should have seen the students' faces when I said, yep, you're going to work with a museum collection, and it's corn. And I kind of went, okay. So <laughs> this, is, this is what actually the sweet corn looks like that we have in the collection, and we had some bug issues, so that's why it's in plastic bags. But um, the, the um, class itself, uh, uh, Museum Anthropology, and some of my learning goals are to look at the changing relationship between museums and what's called source communities, or the communities where anthropological objects were collected. Um, that relationship started out as sort of museums going in, collecting stuff as sort of a colonial mentality of your traditions are going to be disappearing, we need your stuff, we're taking it away and putting it in museums. That relationship has changed dramatically in the last two decades um, to be one of collaborative relationships. So the students learn about that through readings and some videos and we, we talk about that and then they get the experience of actually working with the collection. This collection was, um, uh, was made by a University of Michigan uh, ethnobotanist, um, so somebody with anthropology and botany uh, background, working in conjunction with another person, uh, another uh, curator at a museum in, in uh, northern Arizona. And what they decided to do, uh, which was actually amazing, is to go out and collect plants by household from the Hopi Reservation. And they were doing this in 1935. And I've seen, I don't have, this is actually a picture from the 1930s of a Hopi man out uh, doing farming. And I think they were just amazed by the traditional knowledge of farming. And remember, 1935, we're talking about the Depression. The Dust Bowl had just happened. And so being out in an area where there's eight to ten inches of rain a year, and watching farmers grow these beautiful crops out there must have made a big impression on them. So they went household by household. So I have information on corn cobs, and I can link it to a person's name. And I knew from working with the Hopi community in northeastern Arizona, so here we are in Arizona. This is the outline of the Hopi reservation, and um, these groups are on three different, the villages are on three different mesas. And I knew that being able to connect a uh, household, we could connect with people that were living today, and so that this collection would have a lot of resonance with the Hopi community. And it just seemed like an amazing opportunity for our students here at Michigan. So the class is about 20 students. I had uh, quite a few anthropology students, quite a few students who were getting museum studies minors, so they were already interested in museums. But I also had a student from engineering who's also on the U of M swim team. Um, I had some students that, that were just interested in native communities take the class. So a broad diversity of students. Um, and it's a 400 level class, and in anthropology we hardly have any prerequisites for our classes. So we need to have everybody come in and be engaged in the class. So 
The other thing I want to say is that when many of us think about global education, we think about international education. And as an anthropologist, when I think of globally engaging students, I think of the intercultural experience that they're going to be having. And based on what I'd done as an archaeologist, where I actually had students say to me, you know, I really wanted to go overseas, but your project was more feasible for me, and I think I had a, a greater intercultural experience because of your project working with Native Americans, I, I knew that this would be an amazing global experience for our students. So um, the next question is, what do you do? It's 1,800 miles away from Ann Arbor, Michigan. How do you make a connection between our students and uh, a Native American reservation and a, a, a place Native Americans, one of the things I'll do when I teach this next fall is ask the students at the beginning of the class, what are their stereotypes about Native Americans? Because we blow those out of the water with, with this class. So how do you make a connection? And how do you share a, a collection that's here at University of Michigan with um, community members that are 1,800 miles away? So this is where the, the wonderful technology comes in. What we did was we created a digital archive. More and more museums are moving to digital sharing. Um, here at University of Michigan, uh, the museums are kind of just at the nascent stages of this. The um, Museum of Zoology is doing an amazing job. But the Museum of Anthropological Archaeology, where this collection is, is, is still at the beginnings of that dialogue. So um, what the other wonderful thing about Michigan is there's so many resources. And so for enriching scholarship, last spring I went to um, some workshops presented by the library on um, uh, Omeka, which is a open source content management system that the library has been using for its online uh, um, displays and collect to display collections. And, and through that I realized this is free. It's online. And it's fairly easy to use. And it, the free program doesn't have a lot of choices, but we could use it in the content of this class. So uh, I had the students work with the collections, getting information from the collection itself, getting information from the field notes. And we, let's see if I can bring it up. Will it work? Yes, maybe. And so what we did was we, um, the students put together the information. I used Google Forms. They inputted the information. We could output that as an Excel file. And the beauty of this program is you can batch upload. So we just uploaded the data. And then I was lucky enough to be able to work with the museum photographer to get photos. So in the collection, it's organized by scientific categories. The corn's all in one drawer. The beans are in another drawer. But that's not what resonates with the Hopi community. They wanted to collect it, to get it back to where they were collecting, where the things were collected from. So in this program, what you can do is you can browse by collections. Um, and when I asked the Hopi community how they wanted to learn about the collections, they said, you need to do it from our villages and from the mesas where those villages are on. So. What the students did, and this is how the student groups were organized, is they were responsible for the plants from a certain area. And they, um, you can then take this archive and um, look at everything that was collected from this area of the Hopi reservation. And so you can see, I don't want to take up too much time, but this is one of my favorites because the students were really asking about this. So this is some melon that we have dried in our collections. And then what we did, um, is there's the museum information, and then here's information from the field notes. And the thing that was funny here is that this plant has like smallpox, is how it was described. And the students were like, smallpox? Why are they saying that? Is this really diseased? And I was like, no, it just looks like that to them. But you can see some of that information. So this, uh oh, now I'm going to, how do I get back to the slides? There we go. Okay. Sorry. All right. So we use that to start our discussions um, with the Hopi community and for students to kind of learn about the background of the collection. 
what we, um, after the students had input this information, looked, looked at it, thought about the, the objects themselves, one of the things I was doing was having them blog throughout the project to reflect on what did they think about when they looked at the collections? What did they think about when they looked at the field notes? And I'm not going to go to that in the interest of time. I have some student responses at the end, but that's the website if you're interested in looking at the, the responses. When I originally designed this project, I thought the Hopi community was going to be really thrilled to look at the museum collections. But guess what? They're farmers. They know what beans look like. They know what their corn looks like. What they went to was the blog because they knew they were going to be interacting with students. And they, I put pictures of the students up. They had the student reflections there. And this is what they went to to uh, learn about, to, to get introduced to the student groups that, that they were going to, be, um, going to be talking to. All right. So, um, so the next step was creating this connection with community members. And how do you do that? And I have videos, and I could talk to them till I was blue in the face, but I'm not a Hopi person. And so what I did was, after I gave them a basic introduction, I asked my Hopi community project um, coordinator, who, again, I was able to use grant money to hire. Um, her name is Susan Sakakaku. She's somebody I'd worked with for nearly 10 years now. Um, and she was the liaison. She is an amazing person in, in being able to take Hopi culture and distill it down. So she um, uh, introduced them to Hopi culture, sort of appropriate ways of asking questions at, at Hopi, and in, in particular, and something I stumbled on, was the importance of introductions. When, uh, for Hopi, each Hopi farmer decided to introduce themselves in their Hopi language and to give them uh, to give information about their background. And so I then told the students that they needed to introduce themselves in the same way, talk something about their own history, their family history. And Philomena had suggested maybe you say something about your name and the history of your name. And that served to start creating this connection with, with Hopi farmers. And then what happened is the students were able to video conference specifically with farmers. Um, and each student group only had about 40 minutes with, with the farmers, but we recorded them and students could see those, those interviews. Um, so it was, it was it, it, all the comments that I got from the students was it was too short. But you heard Stefan talk about the problems of coordinating schedules and things like that. Um, and I, I wish that we could take more, had more time, but we're also asking these farmers to take part of their work day to, to talk to these students. And actually, the lack of daylight savings time worked in my favor, because then I was only two hours difference from Hopi, and my class was in the morning, and farmers get up early in the morning. So they were very happy to be talking to my students at, at that time. Um, all right. So I know I'm running over time here, but what did I learn? The first thing I learned is how important our local resources are. That local, that collection that we had is such an amazing collection. And we can marshal that for a dialogue, um, on a, for an intercultural dialogue. So I, the students would not have been invested in the project if they hadn't worked with that collection initially and learned about the important changes that are happening mm -hmm. in museums. The other thing which you all know is that we have amazing resources here and oftentimes all you have to do is ask to get help with video conferencing technology, to get help from museums to organize collections, although I did a lot of that myself and it took a huge amount of time for me to, to organize and learn about the collection and then to get it ready to work with students. But I had a collections manager and a photographer that I could, could ask for help. One of the things I was not prepared for in this is, even though I'm an anthropologist, I'm an archaeologist. So I didn't think about how to help students learn how to have a conversation with people that were from a different culture. And for students to prompt them to keep the dialogues going. And so next fall when I teach the class, we're actually going to do a session on 
conversations and I think I'm going to have them maybe do story core like interviews with each other to get to the place where they can think about how to keep a conversation going. One of the things I should mention is when the students were video conferencing, I made the decision to not be in the room because I wanted them to take some leadership in this. And some students kind of fell apart, but other students, they were in teams, so the other students would pick up um, where other students weren't contributing. And so, um, but it was, it was something really different for them because they had to take that leadership role in the, the uh, conversation. The other thing that I learned was how essential the, the relationships that I had already made uh, with um, the Hopi community were. This project would not have been possible if I hadn't been working with Susan for 10 years. So it's, as people think about these global and engaged uh, uh, opportunities, they need to dig deep into the, the partnerships that they already have. Um, this was a huge experiment, um, and I, most of the students, I think, came away with um, a, a lot of understanding and learning. Um, and these are just a couple of their responses from uh, the blogs and then from, from um, information they gave me after the class, specifically about the video conferencing, how important that was for them in terms of their learning, and um, the, the new perspectives on the collection, and then bringing that collection to life was what I really hoped because these were, many of them were Midwestern kids who came in thinking of cornfields and food. And what they learned from this, this project was that for Hopi, corn is their children. It's their life. And it gave them a totally different perspective on um, these agricultural seeds that, that they were seeing in the museum collection. So thank you very much.